Well hey guys and welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while, but when it's summertime it's really awkward to go shooting. Nevertheless, myself and Dwayne have had some successful trips out on the Charlies, so come and join us as we go summertime foxing. Well that all happened rather quick. Before we get on with the main video, I have a 1 minute and 30 second presentation from one of the channel's main sponsors, Olight. Now y'all know I'm a genuine fan of Olight products and this O-Bulb Pro is certainly no exception. Starting at midnight on the 12th of this month, they have a summer sale, which includes this phenomenal little product. IPX rated, with a battery life of up to 80 plus hours, this very versatile unit is exceptionally handy in and around the home. I use one of these both in my wardrobe and in my gun cabinet, but the new Pro version has an app of which when you pair it, which is very easy to do, it will enable you to remotely control the brightness and even the colour. The O-Bull Pro, along with this very handy little keychain light, can be yours for just $29.99. This keychain light is just £5, along with a host of other products. Please check out the link in this video's description. That's Olight's summer sale up to 35% off, starting midnight the 12th of July. Right, boys and girls. Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> it's about to road this one, but... Hang on a minute. This. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Go. Go. Right. Hi, boys and girls. Team Foxer back with another episode. Now, in tonight's video, myself and Dwayne are going to do another, another private job in pretty much the same area. A couple of weeks ago, we took care of um, at least a fox that was causing... Uh, the owner to lose quite a lot of poultry during the day. Now, um, I'll show you every field and pretty much in, in every area at the moment is really overgrown. We've just uh, ticked over into July, so pretty much summer is in full swing. All the fields are really grown up and tall and it makes foxing, um, especially the, the main type of foxing we do, call in a minute, etc. It makes it very difficult because you often can't see. Uh, but the owner of this particular premises assures me they have a patch of scrubland which is approximately six acres which is bare um, at the back of their property so we should, fingers crossed, uh, be able to call the fox into there. So the job we did a couple of weeks previous we managed to get two there, managed to get one of those on film and called that in a treat despite there being a lot of noise just behind us in the shed. Uh, there was a mechanic working till late and he was revving the nuts off of a, well, to be fair, I think it was a Mustang. It did sound pretty awesome, yeah. but nevertheless. <laughs> nevertheless and he liked his loud music, mate, didn't he? He did, he had his music on full blast, revving his engine, yet we still managed to call the fox in. be good to certainly to get mum and dad uh, and we will see if we see any cubs as well uh, so yeah that's what we'll be using I'm going to be using my Tika T3 and 223 the super, super varmint with 53 grain um, Hornaday factory ammo uh, Dwayne what, what's your setup? Mine's Tika T3 22 20, 22 250 um, I think I'm on Hornaday the same as you yeah We'll be spotting with thermal. I've got the uh, Hike Micro Stella thermal scope, uh, and Dwayne has the Sightmark Wraith you still got on your yeah. way to yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so that's the kit. Um, we're bouncing along the back roads. Sun's going down. It pissed down with rain a little while ago, and there is still a lot of ominous clouds in the area. Uh, but I am also hopeful that it should stay dry, but the cloud cover will help because. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, it would be quite bright. What's up? No, I uh, the 
shakiness of the video, mate. I do apologise, everybody. But that's what happens when you live in the backside of nowhere. Uh, the roads are not the best, so they're very, yeah. very bumpy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, right. We're going to get. Uh, what have we got? We've got another 14 minutes yet, so um, we'll skip forward, uh, and then we'll have a little look and see what the land is like when we get there. We'll catch you in a bit. See you soon. So we've just had a quick walk around with the owner. Um, he showed us where he thinks the fox might be coming from. Um, it, it actually transpires that the place me and Dwayne were at literally a couple of weeks back now was literally next door. Um, so there you are, top tip for people when you get shooting, um, kind of people talk to people. If you want to get more permissions, you know, turn up when you say you're going to turn up, do a good job. Uh, and next thing, you, you know, you'll land the permission next door. And if you do a good job there, they're going to want you to keep coming back. You know, so it's repeat business, um, you know, if you're on paid jobs like this one or um, it's somewhere to shoot. So um, my plan of attack, uh, there's a small bare patch of land immediately behind the premises, which we have permission to shoot on. Um, my plan of attack is to put the caller out there, wait for it to get dark, keep having a scan around with the thermal and seeing what's what. You're probably likely to see it at some point within the next hour. So my plan of attack is stick the GC500 caller in the bare patch of earth at the back there, keep the remote in my pocket, turn the caller on and wait for it to get a little bit darker. Um, probably just before dark, I'll give it a few calls, keep scanning with the thermal, see if we see any movement. Um, and go from there, but that's the plan uh, and let's just see if it comes to fruition. So the patch of land at the back of the property, not quite six acres, but at almost a hundred yards to the far corner, is certainly enough. You can actually see evidence there, white feathers, just where I'm pointing, uh, where the fox had dragged one of the unfortunate chickens through that field. Can't see it on the uh, camera, but the light is fading fast. I just think this is the best opportunity we've got of calling, calling the fox or getting it anywhere near here. So I'm going to put the corner towards the corner of this bit of turned over land. see into the garden and crucially this way which is a much safer shooting place but I think there probably is a big pile of rubble and all sorts over here good chance of even set up over there the fox we shot the other week I stood up against that barn that's where we were when the, the car play was making all the noise because that's the other landowner that had the problem so Wait. It starts off in that corner. Oh yeah. Yeah. The homeowner here See, showing yeah, myself and Dwayne the footage that he'd or the pictures that he'd managed to capture on his trail wildlife camera. Those things are very handy, especially if you set the time on it to tell you what time predators and other animals are visiting your land. The first thing to show just as it gets dark are these two hairs of which we observe through the thermal. Moments later, at just over 60 yards, I see the unmistakable thermal signature of our quarry. Thinking to myself the fox looked quite young in the scope, I changed the call over to the fox fight to mimic a couple of cubs having a scrap and out popped this big dog fox at 94 yards. Now I'm a little shaky on the sticks, so my wingman Dwayne is already steady, taking aim and takes the shot with his 22-250. No mistaking that one. 
Well, boys and girls, that was pretty textbook. As you can see, it's still a, a tiny bit light. But the first fox came just into the field here, probably only around 60-ish yards. And the other one, Dwayne shot, I just got zoomed in on it. It wasn't quite steady enough myself, so I didn't take the shot. But as you pr can probably see in the footage, uh, Dwayne annihilated it um, with his 22 250. Uh, so the guns are safe, there are no rounds chambered, they're empty, so um, uh, oh, magpie chatter, flash on, so I'm going to venture out and uh, go and see what we've got, Christ it's just here, pretty close. Vixen, Vixen cub in and around the feathers that we uh, had. So there's number one. And number two is in the corner. So she must have come from right out the back of the chicken pen here. So that's one down. And I'm going to guess that number two is a bit of a mess only because <laughs> in the in the scope, I saw bits flying off of it. So, uh, that was a much more testing shot because it was the uh, best part of a hundred yards, that, that last one there. So. You've never seen it without thermal, but this one just came straight out of the beans. That's an adult, that one. Is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't tell what it was. That was a dog. There's Dad. There's some tiny little balls on him. That will be a vixen. So, uh, there we are. Well, that's Dad and one of the cubs. Alright, home time. I do love it when a plan comes together. I'm sure when the field of beans gets cut, we'll make a return trip just to make sure there are no more foxes in the area causing problems for the landowner and their neighbour. I thought I'd also though include in this video um, the clip from the previous trip. So this is us a few weeks previous on the next door neighbour's plot. They'd had uh, chickens go missing in the daytime. Uh, now here um, you can see me in the pen and you can just hear loud music in the background. Dwayne stays in the pen and I go round the back uh, looking down towards the farm where we were uh, just a moment ago. I thought I'd seen something cross the path in front of me. Sure enough I kept lip squeaking and out comes this fox. Uh, how this fox still came in with all this noise going on behind me I don't know. Just listen to the guy revving the engine. Luckily the fox was hungry. Now it took a little detour left because Dwayne was also calling and it actually momentarily went into his view but then came back out onto the track uh, and eventually stopped at around 137, 138 yards. Now I kept calling and actually saw the vixen out in the field and certainly without thermal I don't think you would have seen this walking through this beam field. I didn't capture the actual shot on film but I actually walked through the field, headed her off and shot her off sticks at a roughly the same sort of distance in fact. Well that all happened rather quick. This one came up the track, pretty textbook, I'm assuming it's a dog. Because I've just had the vixen out in the field. Yeah. Oh, he's a bigger. Big old boy. Yeah, that's dad. Go 
Oh, he stinks. He's a unit. Look at how chunky he is. Been getting fat on them chickens. Oh, he's a bit of a warrior. He absolutely stinks. So we've got Dad here, and then we've just had Mum in the field. Simply didn't have time to press record. Just didn't have time. But that's the pair. And we've already been shown where the earth is, so we'll get the terrier man in tomorrow. Come finish the job. Great result. Time for one more fox now before we wrap up uh, this session. I uh, just want to say a big thank you to Martin who came over uh, for this particular session. Uh, he took my niece to her prom. Uh, so we went out foxing, uh, or I took him out foxing to say thank you. It was difficult because, again, just like earlier, all the fields are really um, full at the moment. Uh, but we managed to call the fox out from the cover, uh, which is just behind the spinny there. And you can see the young cover crop. Now the birds come in just a few weeks' time. Uh, and we managed to call this one out onto the netting, of all things. I wouldn't have thought you would see a fox run across netting. Uh, in this way but again it must have been hungry it was trying to come round us on the wind but martin pointed out that we should probably uh, take it about there otherwise it would wind us so he was spotting using his uh, spotter so i took the shot uh, at around 140 ish yards give or take all right let's have a look and see what flavor that was as it passed the hair, it really didn't look much bigger than the hair itself. So I would say, adolescent fox. That one. A result. Not a good, but oh, she stinks and not very big. The cellar right there, but literally the spin is here, main drive here. Birds coming in very soon. The farmer said he'd seen fox feeding in the field. Rock up, mess stuff up, go home. Well, we may have only got the one fox that evening, but I'm sure there will be plenty of other opportunities for me and Martin to get out once the harvest is in. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Please don't forget to take care, stay safe, and as always, happy shooting. I'll catch you in the next one.